Introducing Recorded Content, a podcast for small, scrappy B2B marketing teams who want to get the most out of podcasting. In each episode, we capture stories from industry experts and podcasters. Listen in and uncover what it takes to launch, run, and grow a successful B2B podcast. Check out and subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Let's jump in. Hey, this is Justin Brown. I'm the co-founder of Motion and your host for this episode of Recorded Content. Recorded Content is brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcast agency for small, scrappy B2B tech marketers. The first episode of your podcast is nerve-wracking for a variety of reasons, but the biggest of which, in my opinion, is that after you have everything ready to go, the recording is going to not work and it's going to fail. You'll get that first episode under your belt. You had a good interview or a good conversation or did something yourself. You go to check it out and something didn't work. And you're not wrong. Recording HD video and audio over the internet is complex. There's different cameras, different mics, different operating systems, computers, internet speeds. So today we're going to go through a 10-step process on how to test your remote podcast recording software and equipment before that first episode. A couple of things to keep in mind before you test and before we get into number one of our 10 step list. We're gonna simulate a real session in this test. So you're gonna wanna use the same podcast equipment, microphone, headphones, etc., that you'll use during your recording with a live guest. You'll wanna use your same environment that you plan to use during that first recording. You know what, what I see sometimes is that people wanna just do a quick test, jump into the software and say, oh, click around and yeah, this looks like it works. You really want to set up that actual environment that you plan on using during your uh, your recording. With the same environment, you're going to want to use the same computer. So use the same computer, same environment, same equipment. All right, so here are the actual steps for your test. Number one, identify all of the participants for the test scenario. If you're the host, confirm that you're the host. For the guest, Confirm a guest, get a friend or colleague to join, someone who's going to actually jump in and be a simulated guest for this setup. If your company or your podcast has producers who are going to join, have them join the test session. What you're going to see today as I go through all of these things is that, again, we're really trying to simulate that real environment so that you don't have any surprises when it comes to your first session. You're going to want to create your recording session. So whether you're using Zoom, Riverside, Squadcast, whatever recording platform you're using, create a session and a unique link for participants. Don't just jump in and say, all right, yeah, you know, here's access to my general Riverside and, and jump in. Create that session, create the link, a unique room, and run this like an actual recording that you would do with a guest. Number three, invite your participants to the session and share materials. So send that link out that you created for that room to the participants and have them join as they would in a real session. In addition, provide any supplemental materials like guest guidelines that you would be providing to guests. Send that over in an email. Simulate it like you would do with that guest. Hey, you're going to be joining. Here's my link. Here's some guidelines, a PDF about the show. And then when you do ask that guest who's going to be your test guest, have them read through the document. Make sure that it makes sense to them. Make sure that, you know, it checks out that they feel like they are prepared to be a guest if they were to be a guest in your show. So, you know, think about that. If you're asking a friend or family member, are they going to put in the time? You know, maybe you want to ask a colleague who you feel like is going to care a little bit more. Maybe your friend or family does care a lot. Maybe they find it fun. But really, you're trying to uh, simulate it and see if there are any holes in your process that maybe you need to adjust. All right. So as we move into actually uh, hitting the record button, uh, number four here is to prepare your environment. So put your phone on silent, turn off computer notifications, Slack, what have you. Close out all apps that you can. You need to exit out of the application for a couple of reasons. One, uh, big applications take up RAM, which can slow down your computer. Uh, And two, you just never know what is using your microphone or headphones. 
And that leads me to my next point, which is before any recording, you're going to want to restart your computer. It's funny because I run into this all the time. I am talking to a CEO or I'm talking to a member of someone's board who is joining their podcast and they're like, Justin, it's not working. Uh, I, I can't hear Susie or I can't hear Jim or what have you. And I have to come in and say, all right, you know, Jim, I need you to restart your computer. And then I get the same response, which is, I restarted my computer this morning or I restarted it yesterday. And I'm like, okay, I appreciate that. But can you just restart it again? And they restart their computer and lo and behold, it works. Today, before I started recording this session, I restarted my computer, plugged in all my equipment, made sure that everything was connected and then hit restart. You just never know what your computer's going to be picking up from an audio or video perspective uh, as things get unplugged and replugged, where audio and video is getting pulled from on your computer, uh, whether it's, you know, the audio from a monitor or the audio from the actual laptop or the audio from your uh, microphone or the audio going into your headphones. Uh, just restarting your computer solves a lot of problems. If you ever jump into your, into your session and you can't hear a guest or the guest can't hear you, both of you should restart your computers. I know I'm harping on this and I know it sounds silly, but it solves a ton of problems. So before every recording session, restart your computer with your equipment plugged in when you hit restart. The next thing is to check your internet connection. Uh, used wired if possible. So if you have an Ethernet cable that you can plug into your computer, that will help with any spotty uh, internet connections. And if you can, also try to have your internet connection be 30 megabytes per second or faster, if possible, 50 megabytes per second. That's actually not that much nowadays. Uh, if you're capturing, you know, on something like Riverside where you're doing local, local capture as well as cloud backups, uh, there's a lot of audio and video that is running through your computer. The faster your internet, if you're wired, uh, you're going to set yourself up for success. Make sure that you have at least two gigabytes of free storage on your computer. Get a glass of water. Don't sit in front of a window. So really check that environment. Um, you don't want a window behind you that can cre uh, create shadowing, make you look bad, what have you. And just find a quiet spot in your home or office environment, hopefully one that is not going to be disturbed. And lastly, as you prepare for this recording session, uh, get a notebook or notepad to capture any notes. Uh, you're not going to want to take notes on your computer and type up uh, that could be captured on your mic. In addition, you don't want to necessarily be clicking back and forth of mute, take notes on your computer, unmute. Uh, you want to keep it to be a more organic environment. So being able to write notes does help a lot. Number five is to enter the recording session and check your equipment in the green room. So whether it is Zoom and you're running a test, whether that is Riverside or Squadcast, uh, you're going to want to check your mic levels, check your mic technique, uh, make sure that it's aimed the right way, and stay at a comfortable range from that microphone. You see where I am right now. I'm not all the way up on the microphone. Uh, but I am close to it. That allows it to not sound like I'm hollow or in an empty room. You're going to want to see if you can hear through your headphones. So as I talk into this mic right now, I can hear myself in my headphones and I have good levels. I don't sound grainy. I sound very clear. You're going to want to also check your camera frame. Uh, are you clear? Is the camera positioned close to your eye level and do you look good? Number six, check the equipment and environment of other participants. So once you do jump in, you know, do start asking them some questions. Make sure that you can hear them well. How are their mic levels? Do you have an echo when they when you speak? And do they hear an echo when they speak? If they do, you may have to adjust. Also check how your guests are positioned within their camera frame. Don't be afraid if someone is sitting in front of a window to say, hey, you know, and especially if you're doing a video type episode, hey, you know, can you move so that that window is maybe uh, behind your camera instead of behind you so that you get good or you know, good organic light, uh, versus having it behind them and being too afraid to ask. And then the final product, you know, either you or they are disappointed in, and then you just want to make sure that they can hear you and any other guests. So just tests all around to make sure that everybody can hear each other. Everybody can see each other and everything is clear. Number seven is to simulate a real recording session and have a dialogue between you and the participants. 
this is super important. So you don't want to just jump in, hit record and say, all right, looks like this works. Uh, you know, it may fail after 60 seconds. So run this as a session. Spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes in there. Hit the record button. Use it as some practice time to do your intro, your lead in. Hello and welcome to another episode of Recorded Content. This is Justin Brown. You know, use it to carry a dialogue. If you, you know, one of the things that I've actually told people is if you have a 15 to 30 minute meeting with a colleague, do it over Riverside or do it over whatever your recording platform is and use that as your test. Follow all of these 10 steps, but, you know, carry your conversation or dialogue uh, with that person in the meeting that you were going to have anyway. Practice your lead in, practice your intro, and then spend some time with the record button hit just talking. So that way, when you go back to check it out, that you have 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that, okay, yes, it worked for the first minute, but did it work for minute seven? Did it work for minute 10? Did it work for minute 12? Okay, if we got into that point, you're in a pretty good spot where, you know, you, you have more confidence heading into that first recording session, which is really what this is all about. This is all about getting it so that when you go to hit the record button for the first time with a live guest, that you have confidence that this is going to work. Okay, so you've hit your record button, you practice your intro and lead in, you carried on some conversation. Number eight here is to conclude the session. Stop recording and ensure that all files have uploaded, whether it's Riverside or Squadcast or Zoom. You know, you're going to check and make sure that everything worked appropriately, and then you're going to exit your session. Number nine is to review those files. So go in, download the files, you know, especially if it's uh, a recording platform that records on uh, different tracks. Check out yours, your video, the guest video. See if everything worked well. Do you sound good? Do you look good? How did the guest sound? How did the guest look? And then pinpoint any adjustments that you want to make. All right, so you just ran your first test session. I've gone through numbers one through nine. So number 10 here is run a second test. You're going to want to go back through all of this again. Now, do you have to? No, you don't actually have to listen to anything that I've said here today. You can go into your first recording session and it's a live one and hit record. But what I'm trying to do, again, is to set you up for success as much as I can. And the way to do that is, yes, it worked uh, for that first guest or that first test guest. But the thing about recording over the internet especially in HD and on different tracks and things like that, is everybody has different setups. Everybody has different mics, cameras. There is not a uniform anything when it comes to content creation remotely over computers. You know, different mics, different cameras, different internet speeds. So running a second test with a, with a different person, having a different setup for them, same setup for you, and ensuring that it works again will only help you to succeed on that first session. So to recap, your 10 steps on how to test your remote podcast recording software and equipment to ensure success for that first session are to identify all participants for the test scenario, create your recording session, whether using Zoom or Riverside, invite your participants to the session and share materials, prepare your environment just like you would as if it was a real session, enter the recording session and check your equipment in the green room, check the equipment and environment of other participants in addition to yourself, then you're gonna to wanna to simulate a real recording session and have a dialogue between you and the participants. You're gonna conclude that session and check all of the files. And then finally, you're gonna run a second test. If you do all of that, your first recording should go off, hopefully without a hitch, and you'll succeed faster and on that first episode. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning into another episode of Recorded Content. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Recorded Content, a show brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcasting agency for B2B tech marketers. We do the podcast stuff so you can focus on strategy, building brand awareness, and developing new relationships. To learn more about how you can launch and grow a podcast for your company, check out motionagency.io. Thanks for listening to Recorded Content. 